G'day Reefers! Welcome to another episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. We're here in store today to talk all about how to safely freight corals. The number one priority when it comes to freighting coral is the livestock. Keeping it healthy and safe during transit is absolutely imperative. It's definitely one of the more important parts about fragging and sharing your coral. So today I've got a number of freighting orders to prepare for. So I thought why not give you guys a rundown of what we do here as part of our procedure to ensure our pieces arrive safely on the other end. The first step to freighting your coral is to find an appropriate freighting box. It's imperative to use a styrofoam cooler, especially in countries here like Australia, where we struggle with very high temperatures uh, and very cold winters. It doesn't really snow all around Australia like in some places in the world, but this part is important. So, an official freighting box for seafood comes with a logo. This seafood approved transport logo ensures that your coral can safely get on any plane or any transit system without uh, leaking and also keeps for good insulation during transit. The next thing I like to do is look up the weather at the point of destination. This will help, help you decide whether you are going to need an ice pack or a heat pack. I tend to only use an ice pack when the outside temperature is over about 30 degrees Celsius and a heat pack when it's kind of around 15, 10, 5 degrees Celsius. Uh, these can be available at your local chemist or you can buy them in bulk online. I do find the gel packs last over 12 hours if they're well insulated within the foam box. So first up, check the weather. Before we start to insulate the box, it's important to label it for transit with the address, the customer's name, all the details of uh, their phone number and our phone number so that the courier has absolutely no confusion as to who it's for, where it's going, where it's from. So we put this on the box before we start to insulate it because later it can be a little tricky getting through everything just to put this on at the end. Once you've got the label sorted on your chosen box, it's important to find something for absorbency. Now you can use a kitchen paper, we like to use recycled newspaper and also secondarily bubble wrap. line the entire box with a couple of layers of newspaper. Now this isn't just a case of leaking, it's to compensate for some of the loss in temperature. Um, it also provides for a little bit of extra cushioning between the bag and the box. Um, I do find it's really important not to be too stingy at this process and just take your time ensuring that everything is done properly. It will make such a difference on the other end, believe me. And now for the extra layer of bubble wrap. This will help protect the coral, cushion it. Uh, you know, you could do the same procedure with fish. I just tend to be a little more coral minded, sorry. We pack a lot of coral every week. Um, but I will show you an example of a fish coming up soon. It's ready to go and be filled with the precious livestock. So the next part I like to do is get a packing list ready. We put all the names of the pieces onto little stickers which we're going to label the bags with. This helps avoid any confusion, particularly if you've got multiple orders to share with your fragging friends. So what are you going to put your pieces in? Number one on the list is fish bags. These are 100 micrometer bags which are made especially for freighting livestock and uh, fish and corals tend to do quite well when transported in something this thick. If you have something thinner, you can always 
use multiple layers of bags. We have got every kind of contingency plan sorted here at Gallery Aquatica, so I tend to get it ready with a double bag. Um, some people like to use plastic containers. Now, this can be especially good for, say, SPS coral that's a bit sharp. You can actually glue your frag base onto the underside of a lid and screw it down. Um, you would need a little bit of extra preparation, maybe doing your gluing the night before you freight. Um, and for smaller pieces, I've seen very small cups like this used also. We really prefer to use bags here because this way we can use oxygen, but I have seen successful methods other than bags um, used before. Choosing which size bag to use is really determined by the size of your container and how many pieces you need to fit within it. These we like to use for frags and something like this is appropriate for a small fish or a medium wild coral colony. When it comes to getting ready to put your livestock in the bags, you're going to need a couple of extra things. Jugs, so you can transfer the water. Carbon, to absorb any kind of coral slime or to bind to cortisol released from animals in stress. I like to use a coral dip to clean up your corals uh, and just get any algae off and ensure that there's no pests heading in the other direction. Rubber bands and scissors to clean it all up at the end. So the carbon is in the bag. We've got two bags ready to go. We're gonna scoop the water from the original setup. So there's, again, minimizing the amount of transit stress potential. We've got our orange rainbow zoophrag here. Gonna dip it. Scrub all the algae off the base. Lucky this one's really clean. One more dip. A quick bath to remove the dip. Pop it in the bag. Ready for oxygen. Like to use two rubber bands, another contingency backup plan. And then we're gonna pop on our label. Make sure no nothing gets forgotten. One more bag, just in case. Another rubber band. It's all about bags and bags and bags and bags. And there you have it. Coral frag bagged safely. There can be a common misconception with how much water to oxygen is required in the transit bags. Now as a general rule, one quarter to one third full of water and two thirds to three quarters of air is general practice. This is because the more oxygen availability these creatures have in transit, the longer they're going to be able to last. So what are you gonna do if you don't have medical grade concentrated oxygen on hand? Well, there is one trick I can show you which helps you bag with the maximum amount of oxygen with a nice tight bag without the machine that we have here. You take your bag get about a third to one quarter to a third full of water and find the edges of the bag. You're aiming to join them together the opposite way to what you might think. I'll just bring this down a little easier. You fold the bag from the top and I'm putting a little bit of pressure on the edges to make sure no air escapes then fold it in and fold it in and with my left hand twist, twist, twist. You can see here that's very taut, very tight, at least two thirds of oxygen in there and ready for your rubber band. 
we go lower and lower with the rubber band in order to ensure that it's nice and tight and taut so there's no problems um, in the bag with the coral potentially uh, breaking that bag. So you can see here, nice bag without air. It is important to put a little bit more effort and thought into sharp pieces of coral. This Dallas Acropora is going to need a little bit of extra care when it comes to ensuring the bag is nice and taut, the right size, um, possibly use two, three, four layers of plastic just in case. You can always add a bit of extra tape which helps keep it very, very strong and taut. I have also heard a lot of people like to put one layer of newspaper between the double bag and the third bag. That can work e equally as well as masking tape. So I'll just show you real quick how to do this acro. Dip it, bath it, <laughs> dip it, inspect it, another bath. We've got our water from the system here with the carbon ready. It's the perfect size, it's completely covered. Concentrated air, good twist, nice tight rubber band. Now before we do our third layer, we put some newspaper in a third bag. I just like to cut some of the excess off so it's nice and neat. So we put down a layer of masking tape or packing tape place our bag down so that the base is like this. This is very helpful if you don't have a square bottom bag. Now I like to use a lot of tape just to ensure that's going to be no chance of it falling over or becoming immersed in transit. We have some newspaper ready. You can do one more layer if you so desire. Before you put it in that last bag. <clears throat> so when it comes to freighting a fish, it's really not very different. We've got the water from the original fish system already waiting in the bag with the carbon. Cameron Koala is going to get a beautiful aquacultured Ocellaris clownfish. He wanted a little boy, so we're gonna make sure we get a small one. Gently place it into the bag. And ready for oxygen. Now we're up to the final step of placing your precious livestock within the box, ready to go. So, in Sydney today, it's nearly 40 degrees Celsius. So we're gonna put in an ice pack. I like to put this at the bottom because hot air rises. Also, it's quite heavy. I'm just gonna put an extra layer of protection around the ice pack to make sure it doesn't get too cold. We've got our pre-prepared box with liner, absorbency liner, cushioning, we're going to put that in the bottom. Lots more layers of newspaper. Got the clownfish. Dallas Acropora. Now at this stage, if you are concerned, especially if there are a lot of bags, you could put these bags in another bag. We like to use a heat sealer for this one, but for Cameron Koala, we're gonna be okay, I think. So every bag 
has an extra layer just in case. It also helps prevent anything falling over in transit. Everything's pretty nice and tight in there. There's a little bit of room here. So again, you can use bubble wrap, just a little bit more newspaper to fill in those gaps. At this point, we usually put in a little bit of an information pack, something uh, like advertising, a little bit of a freebie, some lollies, so the client on the other end gets a little bit of a surprise when they're opening. And this is where the system with lining that extra newspaper in the beginning really comes into action. You just fold it all back over, just like a present. It's all very neat, well insulated, sits within itself. Use a little bit more tape just to secure it, just in case, but you can tell that's not going anywhere. Lovely. You can always put a bit of extra information now about my coral likes low light or what kind of a pH or salinity parameters you're, you're using here at, at the point of origin. Um, but you know, generally you just want to communicate really well with, with your buyer. Got the lid on, it's already labelled. Contingency plan, we've got it labelled twice in case that comes off. So next step, sticky tape. There can never be too much tape. This isn't just to make it difficult to unpack. <laughs> it's actually, once again, to insulate, to prevent any of the outside air getting within the inside of the box. Also, worst case scenario, if through all those layers, if you get any leaks, that will completely ensure the courier or postal service is not going to experience any of that corrosive water. Also, if it gets left in the rain, any labeling you have done will be protected. I like to do this extra step around the base in case it gets dropped or kicked. There can never be enough tape when it comes to healthy coral on the other end. Now we'd be ready for our freighting label from our courier. Um, you can also take this time to label the box. Uh, you can use pre-designed labels to warn people that there is livestock inside. We have all this information on our freight label here, but I like to do all the sides of the box, just in case. I circle this, perishable, live fish and corals inside, this way up, just in case, and it's ready to go. So thanks for tuning in to Gallery Aquatica TV today. My name's Anya, and I really hope we've been able to help shed light on some of the tricks and tips needed to safely freight coral and fish around the country. So that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's gonna be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy, and keep on reefing.